3D printer maintenance. It's not a whole lot of fun, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to get it done. Hello everyone, Chris here, and I have kicked around the idea of making 3D printer maintenance videos several times over the years, but it never seems to work out. When one of the printers goes down, I either need to get it back printing quickly, or when I go to make the video, something happens and it doesn't work out in my favor. But today I think I have an instance that might provide some useful information. This is my Prusa Bear, and of course we built it on a set of live streams. Well, when I was building it, I couldn't find the linear bearings that I wanted to use for the kit, so I had to use some more cost-effective items. And it's never been quite right. Just have a listen to how the bear prints right now. So there's definitely something not quite right here. It's always been just a little bit loud, but it is getting worse. So I'm guessing there is some wear. So that's a perfect time for me to show you what I would do to maintain some of these bearings. And we're just gonna take a general look at printers that use a linear bearing and ones that don't. Just get some general information here and how you can treat your bearings before you even install them if that's the way you wanna go. So let's start just by taking a look at the printer and some printers that don't use linear bearings. So my Prusa Bear is just a Mark III completely stock with an aluminum frame. I haven't done any of the other upgrades. On a stock Prusa printer, the i3 design, you're gonna have 10 linear bearings. Three for the bed, three for the X carriage, and two in each side for the Z. Now this has always kind of been the classic i3 design. You don't see as many printers that use linear bearings and smooth rods now as you did a couple of years ago. Most of the time what you see is V-wheels on extrusion. Like you see here on the Ender 3, instead of having smooth rods that guide your axes around, you have these wheels that run inside these V-slot extrusions. So you have three on this side, three over here, three on the X carriage, and then four on this one on the bed. Sometimes you see six. But this is the most common design for the most cost-effective 3D printers you're gonna see nowadays. So the linear bearings really don't apply. The V-wheels have a different set of problems. That's probably more for another video, but we are gonna to touch on that eventually. But we'll talk just a little bit more about them. So as far as carriages are concerned, this is mostly what you're going to see. Here's your typical V-slot wheel. It's just a plastic wheel, sometimes it's Delrin but it runs on a sealed bearing. Before you see the bearing causing problems, most of the time you'll see this plastic part get wear. This one's actually starting to wear a bit. So you would have to replace this portion way before the bearing. The biggest issue you see on these as far as quality goes is this bearing isn't very high quality. Sometimes it's not even center. So that would be a bigger problem than using one of these bearings. You would probably never need maintenance on these. It would be just a replacement. And then we have the typical linear bearing that you see on the printer. Now there's a lot of different kinds of these. The only difference in between these is this one came from AliExpress and this one came from Masumi. Now the Masumi parts are going to be a lot higher quality. They have better seals. Just in general, they're a better made part. But for 3D printers, you can usually get away with using these cheaper ones with no problems at all but it's even better if you treat them a certain way before you install them and keep up with your maintenance. If you take a look up close at these bearings, most commonly they have four exposed tracks inside that have recirculating balls. So as the shaft goes over these balls, it advances it forward and makes a very smooth transition. There are four tracks to help keep it in place. Everything's sealed in. And you're probably gonna see different badging on a lot of these bearings, but it's pretty basic when you're looking at things for a 3D printer. LM, that just means it's for linear motion. The eight is how big the inner diameter is. Most commonly you see eights or tens on 3D printers. And then sometimes you'll see a UU. That's based on how the bearing is shielded inside. But most of the time you're gonna see something that says LMU eights or LM8 UU, something like that. They're pretty much all the same but there are varying qualities. And you can get pretty high end or pretty low end, but most are gonna work for this application. Now there is one catch to using something like a Masumi bearing. And that plain and simple is price. 
Right now, one single LMU8 bearing from Asumi costs $7.76. So by the time you buy all 10 for a design like on the Prusa, you're in over $80 just for bearings. If you take a look on AliExpress, you can get two of these bearings for 93 cents. And most of the time, if you treat them the same way, how I'm gonna show you in this video, you can get by with these cheaper ones. I definitely would buy a lot more of these more affordable options for your build than you would from Masumi. You're almost never gonna get a bad part from Masumi, but you might get one that wasn't so QC'd, as I like to say, from AliExpress. So if you need 10, just go ahead and buy 20. That way you'll have lots to choose from if there's a problem. So there are a couple of reasons why I wanted to make this video. One, I think the price on some of these parts is getting just a bit out of hand over the last couple of years. And I think the maintenance on a linear bearing has been ignored just a bit. There are things you can do to keep up with them to quiet the printer down and even avoid some layer shifts. So if you're seeing something like that, you might want to follow these steps. Also, some of the information that's out there on these bearings, it's a bit mixed. I'll show you what I do. I've never had any problems with it. And we're going to improve the sound on this printer greatly. So let's get into it just a bit and we'll talk about smooth rods for a moment. So here's a couple of 8mm smooth rods. These are typical rods that you would see on a 3D printer in this configuration that uses linear bearings. So the linear bearing just travels on these rods. But of course, not all rods are created equal. These are actually two different types of rod. They are both 8mm, but this one is made of hardened steel. This one is something more similar to stainless. And it does matter what type of steel that rod is made out of. And if you take a look at this one up closely, you can see that that linear bearing has actually cut grooves onto the rod. That is the first indication that you have a rod that needs to be replaced. And it's probably causing issues on your 3D printer, whether you know it or not. So this is the first thing you need to look at. Make sure there isn't any wear like this on your rods. And a little trick that you can do, even if you don't see any wear on the rod, is you can use a neodymium magnet. If your rod is made out of stainless or something similar, the magnet will barely stick to it. It just barely wants to grab on. Hardened steel, like they should be, this is also much heavier just by feeling it, but hardened steel sticks right to it. That's how you know you have a nice solid rod that shouldn't show any wear. Just a little tip, not all 3D printer kits are going to be the same. They're not all gonna use the same caliber of part, but you might wanna check. So that's definitely the first thing you wanna do. Check the rods, make sure there's no wear, and if you're building a printer or creating one from scratch, Go ahead and check them before you even install them. You don't want the lower grade rods on there. They're just going to cause problems down the road. Now the next thing I would do is just a general inspection of any bearing that you take off your printer for maintenance or brand new out of the package even. So the first thing that I would check when you open your brand new bearings is for that right there. That might be kind of hard to see, but I have opened brand new packs of bearings that were full of these little balls. And if all the balls aren't contained inside that linear bearing, you might have a problem. You might be able to get away with losing one or two, but not much more than that. And I recommend just taking one of your smooth rods, make sure it's nice and clean, or better yet, if you have an extra one, even better if they have a chamfer on the end, because that's the biggest problem with these rods. When you're inserting them in the bearing, if they're not exactly flush and straight, you might actually rub on some of those balls and knock them out. So make sure it's all going in nice and straight and even, but just circulate the bearing around a few times before you do anything else. You should have a nice smooth movement. You should be able to feel those balls actually somewhat circulating inside there. And it's probably not the best idea, but with a lower cost bearing, go ahead and give it just a bit of a spin, the rod inside the bearing. I've seen these where the seal wasn't quite smooth and it wasn't round, so it would bind on certain points. That's not good either. Sometimes you can get away with cleaning them and get that to go away, but you need that inner piece to be as round as possible so all the balls actually meet up with the shaft for smooth operation. And then after you've done that a few times, 
You can actually see those balls circulating inside here if you look really close. You should be able to see that rod actually advancing them. So that's a good sign and check all four tracks. Then just have a look inside the bearing. It's not uncommon at all to see that right there. This bearing is probably missing five or six of those balls, leaving a dead spot. And that's never going to give you a very smooth operation. So with this lower cost bearing, we bought a lot of extras, just throw it away and get another one. One other issue that I see pretty common on a lot of these bearings is that track, the rubber surround around here will be higher on one side of the track or the other. And that's not going to do you any favors either, it won't let it run clean. That's why I recommend you spin them on that rod a few times. If you feel any halting at all, it's probably the fact that this surround isn't quite true. And again, two for 93 cents, just pick another one and go on. Eventually you'll find one that runs pretty decent. I don't have a great example to show you, but usually you can see it with your eye fairly easily. Now the next thing I do is use one of these very soft eight millimeter brushes just to kind of run inside the bearing to see what's going on in there and maybe clean out any debris or old lubricant, especially with these cheap bearings. You don't want to damage it at all, but these are soft enough. It gives you a good idea what might be coming out of there or what exists. Maybe if the seal is deteriorating, it will show up on this brush. And if there's nothing very obvious, then we can move to the next step. And if we take a look at the packages on these bearings, we'll flip this one over. This one is from Masumi. These are the more affordable bearings from AliExpress. These bearings here are usually packed in something called Cosmoline. It's really just to prevent rust. It's not a lubricant. And they're probably packed inside here with it as well. Now the Masumi items seem to be packed in something that's a lot lighter weight. You could probably use these with just that oil. It wouldn't be a problem. But even on the Sumis, I still like to clean them and repack them just so I know that it's been done. These, this stuff is actually somewhat sticky. You definitely want to clean this off. If you're going to run these for a long time, this is going to save you a lot of headache. So what I'd like to do next is just to clean them all off to make sure we're on a level playing field here. So I just throw them in a container and then I'm going to soak them in isopropyl alcohol. Now you want to get the highest percentage that you can because anything that's not alcohol is going to be water. That's probably not great on a metal surface, but the alcohol does dry really quickly. So anything over 70, 90 would be better. I have seen 99, but just keep that in mind. But I'm just going to let these soak. And I like to set it, let them soak for overnight, maybe even 24 hours. Before they soak very long, you can kind of mix them up. Sometimes I'll get in here with my brush and just move them around a bit to make sure all of those sides, all the ball tracks are going to get some alcohol in there to clean them out. And after they've been soaking for a while, we definitely need to get them dried off. We don't want any of this alcohol to get mixed in with the grease that we're going to pack them with. That will degrade it some. So make sure they're nice and dry before you reuse them. If you want to clean them a bit after they've been soaked, that might even be better. You can use your brush, but I also like to use my spare rod and just cycle them a few times. Rotate them, make sure everything's free. You should be able to feel those balls in there cycling. A lot of times if you have a bad bearing, you have a lot of play side to side. Make sure that's not happening. And sometimes they'll just be noisy or they'll have a hitch where they don't run smooth. So pick all the ones that you like the best and get everything dried out. Also, this is a great time. Check your vat here that you, for your alcohol. Make sure there's no missing balls in here. If there are, you might want to find them on these bearings and rule those out. Also, if you're going to let this set overnight, put some sort of cover on here because that alcohol does evaporate quite quickly. Then after everything is dry, we need to pack these bearings with some sort of lubricant. Now there's a lot of thoughts on this. You don't want to use too heavy of a lubricant because the balls won't circulate like they should. A lot of people say you can use white lithium grease, which is fine. 3-in-1 oil. I like to use this super lube, but not all the super lubes are the same. You want to look for part number 21030. This stuff has always worked for me in the past. It's just a little bit thick, but not thick enough to stop the balls from circulating. And you can get these 3D printed tips. 
This one is from user Walter over on Thingiverse. It just has a cap here, but it goes on top of your tube. It has four channels that will line up with all the channels inside your linear bearing. Then that will allow it to pack all of those at the same time and get as much in there as possible. So when your bearing is good and dry, you're satisfied with how smooth it runs and that the internal parts are nice and round, we can go ahead and pack it. We'll just line up the openings on here with all four of our channels and give it a squeeze. You'll probably see some start coming out this seal. You don't want to see any alcohol coming out of here. That means you didn't get it dry enough. If that is the case, go back and clean it up a bit. Let it dry just a little bit longer. But when they're good and sealed, you can see inside at those ball tracks after they've been packed, they almost look flush. So we know we've got more than enough inside here. Then we can throw it back on a rod just for a test. And it might feel just a little bit thick. You're going to press quite a bit of that out. Just go ahead and clean it off. It might feel a little thick at the beginning, but then you'll feel it start to circulate and it's gonna be nice and smooth and it's gonna quiet it down. You can imagine on a printer that has 10 of these, you do this process for all of them and everything's working correctly, it's gonna quiet down the printer a lot. So once you have all your bearings packed, you're ready to put everything back together. Make sure again that you put these bearings on nice and straight. You don't want that rod to scrape the side of the bearing. That could damage some of those balls inside there. Also, I recommend you try to offset these bearings as much as possible. If you have two on the same rod, try to get those tracks separated. Make sure one is turned about 45 degrees. That way they're not following the same path. You have as much contact over those two bearings on this rod as possible. Prusa actually has a great picture of this on their guide. This is a great picture to show you what I'm talking about. Now, you're not going to be able to do this in every application, but if you can stagger them like this when you have two on the same rod, you're going to be better off. So just keep that in mind when you're putting your printer back together. Now that all our bearings have been cleaned, inspected, replaced, or just repacked, the printer is back together. Hopefully it's going to run a lot smoother and quieter. Now remember, there's a lot of methods of doing this type of thing. Not everybody does it the same way, and I'm sure there's a lot of opinions on how to do it correctly. This is just what's always worked for me. So let's check the sound on this printer again. Hopefully we're a lot better off, and we'll do a test print. And after you've repacked those bearings, you're probably gonna get some buildup on the rods here. After it does its thing for a little while, you might wanna come in here and wipe off some of this excess just so it doesn't get on your print eventually, but that's no big deal. Just wipe it off with a clean cloth. And if I get the mic up close, you can definitely tell that the printer has quieted down a lot. That is much less annoying. So there it is, just a quick video to show you what I do as part of the maintenance on these 3D printers. There's a lot of different topics that we could touch on, but hopefully we'll get to that in the future. And I would like to touch on the V-wheel aluminum extrusion scenario more as well. So hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today, and I'll see you on the next one.